Training in isolation is new to all of us. Not knowing what to do when you're used to having an instructor or a training officer right there can be a little demotivating to say the least. So I spoke to people from all over Australia, from HEMA and HMB to reenactment and LARP to come up with 10 tips to keep you going during this time. But if I'm going to give you some advice on picking up a sword, first, a disclaimer. Some fighting my simulations there can be dangerous even when done correctly, which may lead to serious injury and or death in some cases. Always general responsible experience supervision where possible. Ownership and use of swords in the material environments may be regulated or illegal in some areas of the globe. Always about local and regional laws. I do not condone the use of swords of the material environments for the purposes of malicious intent. Always train safely and always use common sense. Now, I'm not a lawyer. I'm just a guy on the internet, so please take that statement in the best intent. With that out of the way, let's get on to the tips. Tip number one is to just get moving. I know that seems completely obvious, but motivation comes from the process, not the other way around. And you've got to find your kicker to get moving. For me, I like to have a coffee, do a couple of push-ups, and I'm good to go. You need to find your kicker. Try music, crank it right up. Put on the same shoes you would normally put on to go to training. Grab your kit bag, take it completely out into the backyard. Whatever it is, find what you need to find to get your ball rolling. Tip number two is a little bit is okay. If you push yourself too much, it's going to have the opposite effect. So whatever style you choose to train in, make sure it's in an amount that you can comfortably keep up with. And get yourself an accountability partner, someone that you know and trust and will have your back if you fall off the horse and will encourage you to get back on and be that person back to them. Tip number three, and let's talk specifics. Starting with LARP. I spoke to a good few warband leaders and one of the things that kept coming up was the fact that their shield walls are always falling. Now, formations fall all the time. It's just the nature of the game, but you wanna make sure your wall stands strong for as long as possible. So some of the things they suggested was don't overswing. Instead, as you swing, come back to a defensive position as quickly as possible. That way you're good to go for anything that comes your way. And if your teammates do this too, your entire wall will stand for a lot longer. But how do you build that muscle memory so you can just act and not even have to think about it? Well, that brings us on to tip number four. Tip number four is repetition. Make yourself a set. It could be five or it could be 50. The key is to go slow and focus on good technique. And don't go at this like a bull out of the gates. You wanna take your time and build good muscle memory before you build speed. Take this time to get your technique down pat. A few of the people that I spoke to are venerables here in the Australian sword fighting world. And one of those people is Scott Nimmo. He's the director and founder of MSG, Melbourne's longest running HEMA school, and treasurer of WMAA, a national representative body for HEMA here in Australia. So Scott, welcome. Thank you. Now, HEMA comes in a lot of forms, from training just a touch, to fighting in period footwear, to the full hardcore tournament combat. So, for tip number five, what would be your top tip for all of our HEMA practitioners stuck at home? Well, one a, a real good key is, if, you, if you're going to work through sources, discuss with other individuals, throw ideas around and, and keep your mind open, even entertain some of the silly ideas that comes through. Um, I, there's been more than a few technique interpretations uh, that I've changed purely because someone's asked a, a question which seemed silly at the first time, where you go, oh, actually, no, there's a point there. Sinclair's work on regimental broadsword, you need to go off and go, oh, that comma actually denotes that the point of view has now changed over to the other person. The wonderful thing about Fiore is the depth of the information that's in the sources. One thing that has been noted is that with the drills, you look at the image, the size of the beard can indicate the um, complexity of the drill. Seems a reasonable um, hypothesis. Um, I haven't seen any issues with it. But ask questions and go, well, what, what am I missing out of this? And play around with those ideas. Thanks, Scott. While we're on the topic of HEMA, let's talk precision for tip number six. Every time you pick up a sword, I want you to be really aware on how you use it. Stop every few swings to check the little detail. Look at things like edge alignment, footwork, structure, range, coverage. Take a moment every few minutes during your at-home sessions to check the details. And if you really want to get this right, grab out your phone and record yourself. You'll be able to review it later. And if you want a really thorough review, share it online with your teammates.
Making sure we cover a lot of the bases, Medieval Reenactment is tip number 7. Medieval Reenactment already runs a fine line between hitting too hard and too soft. When you're getting slammed by shields fighting half a dozen opponents, and you're trying to get that shot in that is firm enough to be registered through padding and mail, but not so strong that it'll break bones. So from a lot of these TOs, the main consensus was train to touch. Almost every reenactor would prefer a fairy tap to a concussion when getting back to it. Swinging too hard for months on end is going to be a hard habit to break, but it won't take too long to recalibrate to hit just slightly harder when we all get back to training. But if you like to hit hard, then tip number eight is for you. Our second venerable guest here to give his top tip for HMB is Chris Fogwell. Chris is the vice captain and president of the Western Wolves, founder of two clubs, including Team Kraken, and has led his team to help represent Australia in Battle of the Nations. Chris, how are you going? I'm okay. Thank you for your time. I know you just finished fighting a chest infection. Don't worry, he's been cleared for COVID-19. Now, I want to be respectful of your time. So what would be your top tip for all the HMB fighters in lockdown at the moment? Well, the main thing is maintaining that fitness. I mean, the hardest thing to work on in isolation is obviously grappling. If you're lucky enough to have a roommate or a partner stuck in isolation with you that you can wrestle, that's awesome. But is maintain your fitness. Use your Pell. If you don't have a Pell, build one. Um, they're not hard. They're very cheap. Um, you can make them out of recycled parts and hit it every day. Just maintain that movement. Maintain that fitness do things in two or three minute intervals that are working hard for that whole two or three minutes anything that involves striking and moving the upper body and changing your footworks with the lower body so fitness is the probably the biggest thing and technique can be taught thanks chris take care now that brings us to tip number nine which is a footwork this one is easy to overlook if you're not being forced to move by an opponent so specifically make time for this and build it into your drill Practice passing and gathering steps and practice moving in and out of range and mix it up a bit with sideways movement and angular movement. And if it all feels a little weird, just have your sword at rest, put on some music and dance. It'll feel even more weird at first, but your body will naturally move to the beat, which means you'll be able to get into your footwork a lot easier. And tip number 10, my absolute top tip and has been resonated by dozens of people that I've spoken to is just to connect with your community. Strengthen those social bonds, share stories from this time last year and just chat with one another. You'll be surprised at what happens for your training, for you and for your club when you just reach out. There are definitely some hurdles with training in isolation and it's up to all of us to connect and find out solutions that work for us. So with all of that said, I'm going to get a few more hits in. But to see how to connect or talk more about the problems of training in isolation, click here. In the meantime, train safe and stay sword savvy. I've been waiting all my life for something. I've been down the darkest roads and up in the clouds. There's nothing missing now that you're my desire. Now all I have to do is to make you mine. Cause I know. And you know what we could be Like a song, like a perfect melody Baby don't say you don't believe in me Cause you know and I know we're onto something good You know and I know we got something